It's the book that sparked controversy and now has revealing something bigger in the Buckeye Valley local schools. Thanks for joining us at 530. I'm Andrew Kinsey and I'm Yolanda Harris. Now this all started earlier this month with author Jason Tharp's visit to one of the elementary schools. Now he planned to read from his book titled it's OK to be a unicorn, but he was banned from reading that book, and that just didn't sit right with many people in the community. And tonight's 10 Investigates, our Brittany Bailey has been looking into what has happened since then and the conflict between parents and school leaders. Brittany. Well, when it comes to the parents I've talked to, the bottom line is this is no longer about the book. It's about what the controversy about the book has revealed about some of the school board members. It was pretty embarrassing. Um, basically, it made the Buckeye Valley community look ignorant and small minded that they were saying, you know, this this innocent children's book with a unicorn being himself was actually being asked if that unicorn was a tool to recruit gay kids. To just get straight to the point, the author 100 percent denies that the book is about being different, not about being gay. But that's not what one Buckeye Valley school board member thought when he emailed the superintendent. That email was part of a slew we requested from the district. Tom Alabuni wrote in part, we are telling kids that being gay is OK. What the devil? Are we out of our minds? It's just sickening in some ways I mean, to, to see somebody implying that it's wrong to tell kids that it's OK to be gay. That hurts personally, and it, and it also hurts when, you know, a kid um, who's struggling with those kind of issues, wondering what to say to people. Do I say anything to people? Liz Sheets and Andrew Keener both spoke at the board meeting last week to share their concerns. And so did Anna Cunningham, who saw those emails for herself. These emails illustrate and confirm what we all knew. It was never about the book. During that email exchange among two board members and the superintendent, member Donald Dickey chimed in with this. I think it would be in the best interests of the district to cancel Jason Tharp coming to West Elementary. These types of things are exactly what we have been fighting against. Why would we welcome an author who is pushing LGBTQ ideas on our most vulnerable students? It kind of confirmed um, our fears that, yes, there is a very anti-LGBTQ uh, rhetoric with um, a couple of these board members. Making daily life harder for a certain group of kids is not something that the majority of the people in the district think the board should be trying to do. In fact, both parents say that Alabuni and Dickey are acting outside of the scope of their roles. And the Ohio School Boards Association describes the role as often being misinterpreted, pointing out a school board is a policy-making body and does not manage day-to-day -day operations. And yet, when Alabuni learned that Jason Tharp visit would not be canceled, he said this, my children will not be there. This will be brought up at the next board meeting. Well, caught in the middle of all this was the interim superintendent, Jeremy Froelich. I've gained 10 years of experience in this uh, four months going through some of this stuff, and I think uh, the Board of Education has as well. Part of that experience was perhaps learning to gather all of the information before responding. You initially told us you know, Mr. Tharp was not asked to adjust his presentation in any way. And we now know he was. So why, why did you tell us that to begin with? Because that's what I was told to begin with. When we asked for his response to the board members' emails, he was quick to defend his school community. We got great teachers and, and great administrators, so I, I'm confident that all of our students feel, feel safe in our building and that I'm hopeful this is just a one-time incident from, from Mr. Alabuni as he, he reached out to me. We just need to, to take a deep breath when things like this happen, um, not act hastily, and, and make sure we have all the information. So if I were to go back and do it again, it would be one of those where um, we would just need to sit and talk and make sure everybody's on the same page. It would appear that we as parents are going to have to stay more engaged with what the board's doing in order to kind of keep the board on the rails and make sure that the real questions get addressed. It's a barren, always a barren, and that's the way it's gonna be. 
Now, we did reach out to two people who did disagree with the Jason Tharp visit, but they did not want to speak with us for the story. We will, though, include portions of their letters to the board online for you. I also reached out to every single school board member multiple times for comment on this. I only heard back from Amy Dutt, the president of the board, and here is part of what she had to say. We have many new individuals to their positions, each trying to do the right thing. When a few parents voice their concerns, our long-standing complaint policy simply was not followed. The decision impacting Jason Tharp's appearance was taken without board review or action. For that, I am sorry. Now you can read the full statement from her and from the PTO right now on 10TV.com.